This episode is brought to you by the Denver Center for the Performing Arts. The Tony Award-winning DCPA is your source for exceptional plays and musicals crafted by and for the Denver community. The 2023-24 season just got started and features many incredible plays, including Stephen Sondheim's classic rom-com, A Little Night Music, and the holiday favorite, A Christmas Carol. Tickets for each show start at just $35, or you can bundle shows and save up to 21% with a season subscription. Learn more at denvercenter.org. Today on CityCast Denver. Every morning in our newsletter, Hey Denver, we share recommendations of cool things to do around the city. But we wanted to give you a little more than just a recommendation. So today on the podcast, we're sharing our fave events for the whole month of September and picking our ultimate CityCast Denver maybe recommendation, as in maybe you'll see us there. Today is Tuesday, September 5th. I'm Bree Davies, and here's what Denver's talking about. Newsletter editor Peyton Garcia, hello. Hey, Bree. Producer Olivia Jewell Love, hi. Hey. So it's officially September. It's my, it's my season, Virgo season. Virgo season. Sorry, everyone. We're Yikes. bossy people. Oops. I apologize, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about cool stuff happening in Denver and in around Denver in September. Peyton's got four ideas. I've got four ideas. Olivia is going to be the deciding factor in which thing we recommend as our top CityCast Denver maybe for your September. We're doing what we've called before the super maybe for the, September. So we're the doing super the maybe super maybe for your month. The super maybe for your month. And Olivia gets to be the deciding factor because Paul's out of town. And so you are the singular voice. We all know that I will pick <laughs> the voice of the people. So don't worry, everyone. I've got this for per- us. Perfect. Perfect. Well, Pay, let's start with uh, your four events and then we'll go from there. What do you okay. got? Okay. So this first event, it actually is happening today, September 5th. All day? All day. Okay. So, okay. so I know that seems like short notice, but it's something that happens all day long. It's free and you can participate almost anywhere you want in Metro Denver. I love it. What is it? It is Art Drop Day. Art Drop Day. Do you day. know about Art Drop I Day? I think I do because I have a couple artist friends that participated. in yeah. it. Yeah. So it's something that was started in Provo, Utah, like, I don't know, many, many moons ago. And um, Denver started participating in it officially back in 2017. So now the Denver um, Arts and Venues uh, arm of the city, uh, like, promotes it online and they kind of participate in, in it as well. But what happens is artists of any kind, of any level, of any medium across Denver and the metro area, they hide pieces of art all around the city. And then they put clues on social media with the hashtag Art Drop Denver or hashtag Art Drop Day. And so if you search either of those hashtags, you're going to see clues to to hidden pieces. So I don't know if you could find, I guess, pick a piece that you like and try and figure out where it is. And then you find it and then you get to have it. Some of them are like big pieces. Some of them are really small pieces. And so the, the city, they put little uh, mini blue bears. That's oh, what they cute. drop. And so it sounds like this year they gave one to every council person and each council person gets to hide it somewhere in their district and you can find it. I love the blue bear. I want to um, hide one. Yeah. And keep one for myself. So hashtag, search those hashtags and then look and that's it. Um, It happens all across Metro Denver. Yeah. Anyone can participate. So hard hard to beat that. Happening now. Free. Free. free and anywhere. Anyway. What I like about this too is that um, as a person that collects local art from artists, it's a great way to start your collection if you yeah. haven't been sort of a connoisseur and a fun story curator too. of your own art collection. You can collect art at any level. And the other cool part too is like, some of these artists um, p- may not be known now, but they can go the on to be bigger Picasso. and bigger. Yeah, like I'm thinking about my friend who goes by that 5280 lady. She does these really cool pieces on old records, like uh, vinyl. Oh, cool. She'll do paintings on those. And sh- she actually kind of does this all year round, the art drop thing. But I just think about, I like being able to look at art and going, I know the story behind that, or I met this person, or I, you yeah. know, I know who they are. So. I don't know. I, I just like I like to introduce people to the local art scene. And this is a cool way to yeah. get started. Yeah, exactly. It's just really to raise awareness um, about the local art scene, get people more excited about art, help 
local artists get their their stuff exposed. Um, it's just super cool, and it sounds a lot like I've already got Bree's boat. So, <laughs> but that's not whose boat you need. <laughs> that's true. You need Olivia. So, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. What you got next? So, next is um, my next event is Chow in the Park. So we've worked with, or well, we've done an episode, I think, with Chow way back when. So oh. Chow stands for the Culinary Hospitality Outreach Wellness Program. So Chow. And it's it's an organization that really focuses on mental health um, in the hospitality industry. So Which can be a high-stress environment. Oh, my gosh. Totally. And, it, and their whole thing is to defeat the stigma around uh, mental health in that industry because the hours that chefs work, and not just chefs, but servers and bartenders, dishwashers, um, anyone in the hospitality industry, it's, it's really hard. And, and there's a lot of um, substance abuse disorder that that happens in that industry. And so they just want to be, they want to let people know that there are resources out there for them. Um, and all, like, all of their stuff is free for these, That's for so these cool. workers. So, so Chow hosting, in the Park is a Yeah, fundraiser? so it's a, it's a big event. It's actually not even a fundraiser. It's, it's just, just a, an event where they just want to raise awareness and the whole community is invited. And there um, are things like, there's going to be uh, wellness activities, substance use recovery and mental health tools, uh, massages, educational panels, mobility exercises, all sorts of stuff um, to just, I don't know, check on your physical well-being, check on your mental well-being, um, go out there and just like, you know, don't be afraid to talk about mental health. That seems like what it's all about. And it's going to be at City Park on Monday, September 11th. And there's going to be food and drink. And it's just a really good reason to go out there and and Check your brain, you know? I love that it's on a Monday, too. That's clearly for service yes, industry yeah. workers because yeah. that yes. tends to be a very slow and or dead day yes. for that nice. restaurants and bars. So. Isn't that cool? That's cool. I love it. Okay. What else? Yeah. Love that one. Um, this next one is called Bugs and Brews. It's happening Thursday, September 21st at the Butterfly Pavilion Cute. in Westminster. Um, so I've been real into them lately. I share a lot of their info in my Urban Almanac section in the newsletter every Tuesday because they are doing really cool things, especially with the pollinator population. Um, I just went to their annual fundraising gala and it was so cool. They put on really cool events and um, I faced my fear of hanging out with butterflies and I went into their little <laughs> butterfly cage I love thing. that you're like a butterfly pavilion like booster, Lover, but, but she like can't. Afraid of butterflies. It is a little intimidating. Peyton and but I, we share that fear of butterflies. Yeah. We found that out last week that we both are afraid yeah. of butterflies. So I'm, They're just I'm unpredictable. I'm inspired by Peyton's bravery. Yes. They're gentle. Like they're so... Well, they're uh, weird in the middle though, so... Peyton, <laughs> <laughs> hey, what was your... Uh, did you... you you faced your fear. Yeah, you enjoyed it was so it. cool. And they had, so it was like a fundraiser thing, right? So there was like an, a live auction and a silent auction, but they had like, they brought cases of like fancy beetles and bugs. And I don't know, it was just really cool. And I got to hang out with the monarchs. So anyways, they do incredible stuff. So this, but this event in particular this is This event different. is different. So okay. it's happening on a Thursday evening um, from five to seven. And it is adults only, 21 over. Oh, good. And so it's uh, you. It's an after hours adult only exploration of the Butterfly Pavilion where there's going to be drinks. Oh, cool. So it sounds really cool. Hold Rosie, go through the Monarch cave thing. Rosie um, the what's Rosie? tarantula. tarantula. Yeah. Oh. She's like the mascot for oh, the yeah, Butterfly yeah, Pavilion. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't grow up here. Rosie's like a big deal. Um, mm. You out school field trips and they let all Wait, the kids. Wait, how long does a tarantula live? Okay, well, so I found this is out. This a stand -in this, is this a stand-in? Is this a fake Rosie? I'm, I'm pretty upset. I went to I went to this gala. Sorry, small tangent. I went to this gala and you could hold Rosie and I was like, you know what? I never held Rosie as a kid because I was always afraid of her. So I'm going to face my fears, all of them tonight, and I'm going to hold Rosie. And I did. And I was like, this is the Rosie. And she was like, actually, it's not. All of our tarantulas are named Rosie. And I was uh, like, wait, what about the original Rosie? And she was like, yeah, that Rosie probably died years ago. Probably. Was like, in the early 2000s and or I was the like, 90s what? or whenever they opened the butterfly. Probably. Yeah, because I was all telling my husband, I'm like, this is Rosie. She's 28 years old. <laughs> and they're like, actually, tarantulas don't live that long. And Willie was like, uh-huh, I'm sure. Wow. <laughs> well, that's upsetting. So anyways, hold a Rosie, but no. it's cool. This is a really cool opportunity to go check out what they do um, and all of the different programs they offer and, you know, maybe face your fears of hanging out with butterflies. And then you can do it with a little liquid courage. Yeah. This sounds so cool to me. That could help me. I'm not a bug guy myself, but I do fully support Butterfly Pavilion. As a, a person who has a toddler now, that place rules. Yeah. yeah. So, but this is cool. This is kind of an adult thing. Yeah. Yeah. An adult version. Okay. And then what's your final... 
your final my pick? final one. All right, this is I'm I'm putting this one out to you, Olivia. Okay. Denver Oktoberfest. Oh. <laughs> Denver's annual Oktoberfest happens the weekend of September 22nd through the 24th, and it's um over at Larimer and like 21st, and it takes up a couple of streets. Um, but I know people get really into the Oktoberfest thing, and and if you're not really a beer drinker. That's okay because there's so much fun, like tomfoolery that happens at these things, like the keg bowling and the stein hoisting and all of the schnitzel dogs and (laughs) hot pretzel. Yeah, I honestly just love festival vibes. So, like, I'm someone who, like, even if I'm not going to be drinking that, I'm going to be drinking that. But if I'm not going to, but it's just like fun. I just love the vibes. I love to see people in all of their, like, leader hosing. I know. That's what Um, I was going to say. I've always wanted to be one of those girls that had the little outfit. (laughs) There you go. I used to have long hair and braids, you know, now I have short hair. So, find find yourself a leader hose in Olivia. And these are, these are just so fun. There's so much, like, ridiculousness that happens at these things. Um, Sounds fun. Yeah, I think they do like, I can't remember what kind of dog. They do a dog race of some sort. I can't remember. Wow. Can I bring Silent my, Disco? Can I bring my large cat? Um, I think you I'm, could win. I'm not you could bring your cat. Say no. You could bring my your large cat. My delicious. large cat could win the dog race. Yeah, so anyways, really, you know, that's that's a rowdy time. That's insane. Okay. That's pretty okay. fun. Oktoberfest, you're mm-hmm. going with Oktoberfest. I, like, I kind of like it, Brie. You're yeah. going to have to bring the heat. Yeah, well, as usual, Payne and I's choices are very different. I know. There's never any worry <laughs> we about know, we, I've got a, I've got an eclectic taste, so. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, my picks for your September events calendar. And we are back. All right, Bree, let's hear those picks. Okay, these are my picks for your September. Uh, starting Saturday, September 9th, also known as my birthday. <gasps> Bree day. 9-9, nine, nine, that's me. Uh, I'll be at Westwood Chili Fest, mm. as always. Uh, this is the annual Westwood Neighborhood Festival. Uh, I think the highlight of it is the chili eating contest. If you want to watch people sweat their no. brains out on stage. No. It's inc- pretty incredible. Two-time winner Ian Thomas DeFoya will probably be their former mayoral candidate. <laughs> you may know him. He's he's fun. He's, I don't know. He's got a stomach of steel or something. Um, but so anyone can participate. I'm going to ask a real noob question. Yeah. What kind of chili are I, they we have eating? varying levels that they do, and I think that's where the type of chili comes in. Okay, because we're, so we're, we're talking like green chili. It will go. It will depend. Like okay. it will go up and up in Scoville units. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what they start with, but like you have to keep eating spicier and spicier until you tap out. Oh, and it's not like you're not like I thought eating it was quantity. a chili. No, I thought it was like quantity. Spi- who can eat the spiciest? Oh, and are you are you like taking a bite out of a uh-huh. chili or just taking a bite out of a whole chili? Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, my wait. mom would probably. So crush my that. Western ass was just like <laughs> thinking you were eating as Beans and much meat. of a bowl of chili as, as you possibly could, and I'm like, holy crap! How are these people eating so no, much? No, beans? it's a spice. I'm it's glad a spice to level determinant. Okay, okay, okay that's yeah, good that to was, know. That was a language barrier moment. Um, I really got <laughs> concerned. A, I was really it's cons- a Denver cultural thing I was, for you. Yeah, I was know? truly concerned for the amount of beans. But if you're someone that can handle spice, head on over to the Westwood Chili <laughs> Fest. You can sign up. I think at the main stage throughout that anyone can participate. Okay. So I feel no better about, barriers I to I feel entry. a lot better about that. I now. cried after eating a jalapeno last night. <laughs> I mean, I'm also thinking about Olivia saying mouthwash is spicy so <laughs> i think we know where all right but okay. at any rate so there's live music uh multilingual performances folklorico which is the beautiful mm-hmm. dancing there's a great group uh called in la Keche, which uh teaches youth folklorico so they oh. do the dancing oh so cute um local vendors i have to say every year i buy a cool kitchen apron from uh, is that where you got your um my loteria one my loteria one came from there Ooh. i have one that's got ruffles on it I just every year my husband buys me a new one from okay, the Western Chili Okay, if you see a Lotorio one again, you have to get it for me. I totally will. Cute. I totally will. So amazing food. It's just a, it's a neighborhood festival, and I I feel like we talk about Westwood I a know. lot. But like, yeah. if you have not been up there, this is the great yeah perfect time to get to know the neighborhood. I was gonna say this one's really got. I mean, we love West Westwood <sighs> we love stuff Westwood. here. Sounds fun. So that's the food a, that's is a hard one to. Sounds fun. It's now tough that to I, be. now that I know it's not bean chili. Oh no, no, I'm, no, no. I'm willing we don't to watch do. I'm willing to watch people do it cuz I, I mean, was, I don't know. I would do better eating. I was that. mortified <laughs> thinking about watching people eat like gallons of chili. I was like, no. no. this is the fortitude of okay. the spice. Okay. Very cool. Okay, that's okay. Fine. A good let's one. let's hear the next one. Okay, 
Sunday, September 10th, it's a special screening, matinee screening of Pee Wee's Big Adventure at the CE Film Center. I am co-hosting this screening. Oh. I was going to say. <laughs> with uh, CE Film Center Artistic Director Keith Garcia. Um, Keith and I are both uh, Paul Rubens fanatics till we die. Uh, we lost Paul Rubens this year. And the day, I think the day or two after um, we found out he passed away, I just hit up Keith and was like, how do we get all our peewee people together? Mm. And he was like, what if we do a screening? Which has been happening all over the country, actually. Mm -hmm. So lots of places have been doing this. I think the Alamo did it a couple of weeks ago. But if you want to get together and celebrate all things peewee Herman, come hang out with me at the Sea Film Center. It's 12 bucks. It's four in the afternoon. All ages are welcome. And just come celebrate this great queer punk artist that defined a lot of the world for me and I think people like me. I want to say that that is not quite my generation. For sure. And I'm curious Olivia's take. I did watch like Pee Wee's Great Adventure and stuff. I didn't. Growing up as a child, but I wouldn't say it's defining for me. But it's, I love that there's a community for it. There is you know, a I love the Pee Wee definite. stands. Oh, yeah. I mean, I have a Pee Wee Herman tattoo. Yeah. So. The Pee Wee stands are going to come out in full force. And I like that for any group of anything. When the stands are there, it's the best. Well, and I'm glad you brought that up because if, if you've not seen Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Oh, you, did I say it wrong? No, it's okay. But if you might, you might. I don't know. We're going to be saying all the words. This is one of those movies where everybody yeah. says every line. So just be prepared. But um, if you want to come and just hang out with fellow Paul Rubin stands. Well, I'm clearly right. a fake fan because I didn't even say it right. But <laughs> okay. I, I did see it in my childhood at one point. So oh, don't at me. It's not. It's You should see it again. So Pee Wee's Big Adventure, September 10th. See Film Center. My next choice is uh, High Plains Comedy Fest. Mm, okay. mm -hmm. September 21st through the 23rd. I will say full weekend festival passes are sold out. That's how big of a deal this is. However, individual shows will be for sale soon. And something I really want to push people to do is you can volunteer for the fest and get in for free. Mm -hmm. And we talk about this. I, I think we've talked about this a couple of times, but people write in and ask us all the time, like, I'm new to the city. How do I get to know people? I want to meet people. And one of the best ways to do that is volunteering. Volunteer in the scene that you're interested in, whether that's totally. the art scene, the music scene. This is the comedy scene. The food scene, the, the animal scene. Yeah. An event like this brings tons of people together. I have friends that volunteer every year, not just to like get into the fest for free, but to see, hang out. Like you get to kind of hang out. Sometimes you get to hang out backstage with comedians. Mm -hmm. And so it's just this really cool thing. And also... It kind of speaks to how big of a comedy scene we have is we're a destination yeah. now for a festival like High Plains created that festival that brings big acts here. So Mateo Lane and Best Stilling are headlining, uh, but local amazing folks like our friend of the show, Joshua Emerson, whoop, whoop. will be there. Christy Bukley, Janae Burris. Mm -hmm. Some of my personal faves, Miriam Moreno, Kevin O'Brien, and Meryl Wiles are coming back here from New York. They are great comedians I haven't seen in a million years. Um, we've got a lot of locals, too, like BK Sherrod and Matt Kobos. Just people doing great comedy in the city, but you get to see them in this, like, environment full of huge comedy fans. I'm sorry, can you remind me where this happens? Is this like a multi... It's South Broadway. Okay, yeah, it's like a multi-venue oh, type it's deal, massive. right? Oh, yeah. I love stuff happening on South Broadway. I do, and too. Josh has definitely been like inspiring me I was I don't know I was never really like that interested in comedy before I kind of just you know was thinking like dudes getting on stage saying stuff but um I don't know Josh Josh has kind of opened my eyes to it so I yeah, think and if this... you if you want a taster we've had a couple of so obviously we have Josh on pretty regularly and then um we've we had, had Janae, Janae on. on we've had Christy yeah, on we've had yeah. Sam Talent yeah on. go get go get a little teaser listen yeah. back to some of our episodes where we where we talk to them um Brie do you have any ballpark idea of what individual shows might cost they have not released okay. anything so that's what's so interesting about this festival is it's so popular that it sells out before they even announce the headliners wow so i think it'll be affordable for those individual shows it'll just be a matter of getting tickets yes yeah, totally so that's why i really recommend the volunteer route because you might volunteer one yeah. day and then you can just cruise around the shows the next day so that's my that's my hack. I love that. That's it. cool. Um, I really like that hanging. Yeah. Like like Olivia said, hanging out on South Broadway is so fun. Yes. Um, hit a couple of those different ones. A good laugh. Oh, 
Also, you might catch, you might, one of the things about festivals like this is you might wander into a venue not knowing, like maybe you're meeting with your friend or whatever, and you catch someone who's Mm -hmm. awesome that you've never heard of. Yeah, exactly. I had so much fun at UMS just wandering around on Broadway. Same philosophy. So like, I would love to go do that again. And I'm hoping maybe it'll cool down a little bit by the end of September. Oh, for sure. And I think that just sounds fun. I, I, the thing you kind of talked about, Olivia, which is like, oh, a bunch of like dudes standing on stage making jokes. High Plains has done a really great job at having a very diverse and robust lineup. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you're going to see all like. kinds of comedians. Cool. Um, and then my last pick is September 30th. It's the Mid-Autumn Fest at the Far Ooh. East Center. Ooh. Oh, they do such good stuff, they too. They really do. Tell me about it. So it's um, it's a night market. It starts at 2 p.m. They have a pho eating contest, mm. a mooncake eating contest, lion dance performances, <gasps> which are a feat yeah. in themselves. I've never seen a lion dance performance. It's multiple people inside mm. one sort yeah. of costume move, move yeah. like this – moving costume puppeteering situation so cool. that like you kind of can't believe human beings are inside making this thing yeah move. youtube it it's yeah it's, it's, <laughs> it's so cool. beautiful so cool youtube it and then go see it live <laughs> there's traditional drum performances they do all sort of pri- all sorts of prize giveaways there's a kids fashion show um it says bring your kids in traditional clothes to participate on stage there's a homemade lantern contest so again this is a very family friendly event it is free it is uh, the Far East Center at Alameda and Federal, which it's kind of in a sort of gate, not gated, but like it's a two story strip mall area. So it's like very enclosed. So like it's safe for kids to hang mm-hmm. out right on Federal. But um, it's just I don't know. It kind of just showcases how beautiful that part of the city is and yeah. the the just Asian diaspora of folks yeah, that live in the neighborhood. Which I think is so cool. I mean, and and to plug us again, but we interviewed Mimi Long um, with From the Far East Gifts. Yeah, yeah. A few and she's years one ago, of the people right? behind this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if you want to hear a little bit more about her story, and um, I think we actually interviewed her for, what was it? It was Lunar. Was yeah, it Lunar, Lunar Year? Year. I think it was. I think so, but they do um, really cool But they really do really cool stuff things. there. Yeah, it's, yeah, and it's such a cool growing like like you said diaspora of our of our community here that's a tough one too brie you really you did bring the heat okay so let's do a quick rewind to remember peyton will you name your four events yeah so um art drop day happening all over the city for any anyone can participate that's that's actually today um then we had chow in the park on september 11th raising awareness for mental health in the hospitality industry uh, we had Bugs and Brews at the Denver Butterfly Pavilion, September 21st. Um, and then we had Oktoberfest the weekend of September 22nd through the 24th with a lot of um, drinking and shenanigan having. <laughs> shenanigan having is a good way to put yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I've got a September 9th, the Westwood Chili Fest, which is a neighborhood festival and chili eating contest, music, dancing, great food. Uh, September 10th, Pee Wee's Big Adventure at the Sea Film Center. This is a matinee screening of the classic 80s film with me and our friend Keith Garcia. Uh, also, it benefits uh, the Sea Film Center, which is the only nonprofit art house cinema in the city. Uh, September 21st through the 23rd, we have the High Plains Comedy Fest with national and international headliners, as well as amazing local comics all along South Broadway. And then September 30th, we have the Mid-Autumn Festival, which is a night market on uh, Federal and Alameda at the Far East Center celebrating our Asian culture citywide. That's what we got. Olivia? I'm picking one from each yeah. of these, and then they're going to go ahead. Okay, ahead. what do you think? I don't know why. I just got kind of nervous. I'm like, oh. <laughs> no got, pressure. We got at the end. So, I mean, you guys really brought it this time. I have to I say, this like, was a great I feel lineup. like you even oh, stepped good. it up from last time. I think so, like, too. You really brought it. So, wow. I mean, all of them sound like something I would want to go to. But, you know, as we know, there can only be one super maybe. So One super maybe. So who are the, what are the two? <sighs> I mean, I think from Peyton's. I, th- I really think I'm going to end up at Oktoberfest. I just think <laughs> that's where I see myself spending some time hanging out in Lederhosen, you know, <laughs> drinking a beer. Eating pretzels. Eating pretzels. Yeah, I just, I, that's how I envision myself. Okay. All okay. right. And Brie? And then for Brie, it was a tough choice for me um, between going to see the the mooncake eating contests and all of that jazz. But I think I think I've really narrowed it down to high plains I comedy. Knew it. I just I love South Broadway. Love I can hanging read out. you like a book. Oh, I know. You guys you've got me pegged. I love 
hanging out on South Broadway. So we've got Oktoberfest it's, versus yeah. High Plains Comedy Fest. And Ooh. let's be honest, I'm going to go to both of them. <laughs> but there can only be one super maybe. <laughs> it's a hard choice, but it is. I think I'm going to go with High Plains Comedy. Oh, <laughs> and they beat the time. reigning champion. Oh, I'm sorry, Peyton. You lost this <laughs> round. Maybe you can redeem yourself in October with oh, some, I will. some spooky events, but I think we're going to give this one to Brie. Okay. High Plains Comedy Fest is our official super maybe for your September, but... We will have all of these listed so you can get information about all of them and learn more in the Hey Denver newsletter where Peyton Garcia shares her picks every day, five days a week for things that are happening in the city. You can subscribe right now at denver.citycast.fm. Um, again, become a Hey Denver subscriber. We do a lot of sh event stuff on the show, but Peyton goes in depth in the newsletter as well as, like you said, the Urban Almanac. If you want to learn more about the flora and fauna of this place, you also you summarize the news of the day mm -hmm. so well. Um, so you get a little bit of everything. Again, that's the Hey Denver newsletter, which you can subscribe to at denver.citycast.fm. Uh, Olivia and Peyton, this was so fun. Thanks, you guys. Yeah, this was great. This was great. Good job, guys. That's all for today here on CityCast Denver. If you enjoyed this show, why not take a minute to tell Rosie the Tarantula about us? Rate the show wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe to our morning newsletter, Hey Denver, and learn more about us at denver.citycast.fm. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye-bye. I think Paul would be proud.